rough outline. Um, I haven't gotten a chance to go through all of them, but the first five columns for every study will always be, you know, date, title, DOI number, journal, and study type. I think, you know, because that's something that every single table is going to want in it. Um, some of the other columns are going to vary by question. You know, some are going to have a CBC value. Some are going to have a, um, you know, a, a range of dates. Others are going to say, is this FDA approved if it's for um, drugs or treatments or diagnostic equipment? Um, so I will have a, by Tuesday, a set um, format and style for the tables together. Um, so I think that'll kind of clear up a lot of the confusion on which direction tables are going in. Um, okay, and uh, just um, he here's the thing that I noticed in the past month in terms of how to make the collaboration more effective is, um, you know, trying to refer to the problems from the perspective of the, the outputs, like what you want to actually achieve versus the way that you think uh, it, it should be achieved with. So to, to give you an example, when, when you're trying to explain that tables should be dynamic, I actually have no clue what, what you mean by that. But if you would explain like what is the actual end value for, for the person that will be using it, then I'll try to, to figure that out. Okay, um, so when I say dynamic, I, I guess I'm coming at it from two fronts depending on who I'm talking to. Um, in terms of a dynamic table, one, I mean, this um, table is updated, you know, in right now on a weekly basis, but, you know, as we move forward to more consistent pushes um, of the data set, ideally every 48 hour, every 24 hours, the table is up to date. Okay. And then the other thing I meant um, in terms of dynamic is kind of what you had already incorporated into the site where you can, you know, sort by date, sort by um, and number sort by values that are consistent within rows. Um, okay. And I, I, I thought that was great. Um, so that's what I meant when I said dynamic. And in terms of, because uh, my first hunch was that you meant dynamic in terms of um, each like type of paper will have its, its own types of columns. Is that something that you also envision? <coughs> if so, my, my goal... Right now in scientific literature, it's kind of at the discretion of the researcher in the journal of figuring out what a table should look like. And usually it's, you know, you submit something and uh, reviewers get back to you of oh, include the following, don't include the following. Um, I am going to try to keep the format for tables as consistent as possible. I think for some questions, it's going to be, you're going to need columns that aren't relevant to other questions just because it's targeting a specific disease process. And within that subspecialty of medicine, you know, it's standard for, you know, in, within diabetes to see an A1C um, to kind of parse out um, patient subgroups. So my, my goal is to try to keep as many of the tables consistent as possible so that we're not having to develop a ton of algorithms. Okay. Yeah, I mean, so, if you, yeah, so by that, you're thinking basically you will have as few a table formats as possible, and some tables will have columns that will have nothing in it for some data for sets because they won't have data for it. But it'll still yeah, be and, a column. It'll just be an empty column in that scenario. Yeah, or, or you know, we get rid of that column altogether, just uh, not, not crack up, but exactly. And I think uh, Paul Mooney from, from Kaggle will be putting up a, a, a second round challenge also Tuesday or Wednesday on the site. And that's pretty much what the challenge is going to is going to consist of 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 hey we've we've narrowed it down to a specific set of tables you know most of the questions regarding virus properties all kind of have the same format most of the clinical outcomes have the same format we're going to try to come up with a couple of different formats and keep the tables within those as yeah. much as we can it's kind of it's kind of working out that this type of paper normally has this set of variables discussed. And then that type of paper has that set of variables discussed. And some of the variables are shared, but some of the variables are exactly like something with sample size. Anything with a sample size is gonna have sample size, but if it's a paper that's discussing drug category types, it's not gonna have a sample size because it's not, it's not relevant. Exactly, and, and my goal is, you know, I get as many of those overlaps and, you know, if yeah. it's not critical to have that value in that table and it's an 
it's not any other, well, you hard. know, we might drop it and say, hey, for the no, sake of our yeah. algorithms, we'll keep I, it the same. Um, yeah, I think, and then, I think if, 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 when it comes to that, the way I'd imagine it well, is um, order them in the friends. most likely to be in there to the least likely to be in there. And that way, if you do drop mm -hmm. it, it's not going to shuffle the, 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 basically the columns. So the more likely things to get dropped will be at the end of the list. So if you read from left to right, um, it's more likely to be the yeah. same columns across. Yeah, and then the, go ahead. Uh, sorry, I was going to say the, the other thing is, you know, really getting an output. So when when all this started, it was kind of everyone, um, you know, doing their own thing, free free will, kind of, okay, create, create an AI. Um, and now we we really distilled it down of, hey, I'm going to give you a target. You know, I'm going to give you a pre-made curated target, you know, that's already been vetted by the medical and scientific community of what the, what an end product should look like. And now your goal is, to add additional lines to it. You know, yeah. for example, this might be four months worth of studies and here are all the relevant parameters we pull out. And for this fifth month, we wanna see that the AI is actually able to pull out the studies that were released and fill in the, the, the relevant uh, values. Exactly, and it's kind of like the end output will be this intelligent sorting of, of the fields and columns. Um, I can actually share something that may look crazy to you, but at least that's the best way I, I found to actually like explain uh, what has to happen from the big picture view. And uh, you may, oh, since you watched the Rockefeller video, you are familiar with these four mm -hmm. kind of pieces, the data infrastructure, ontology engines, discovery engine, and AI powered literature review tools. But essentially what we are working on in terms of AI is actually understanding the underlying ontology and understanding the all types of uh, you know layers that get into it. So types of types of papers, it's essentially the metadata layer, and we have a team that is specifically working on types of papers and is trying to tackle the machine learning algorithm to identify those. But also, you know, this can be uh, going into types of authors, sources of papers, and infinite amount of things, which um, also goes into direction of uh, the direction of research because different types of papers are used for different types of uh, research. You know, some people are looking to treatments, some into drugs, some into vaccines, some of, some into trials and, and things like that. And that produces the data layer, which is essentially, you know, the dosage ranges, genes, the types of specimen, types of animals, like types of animals are irrelevant for people that are looking into like how public transport, the transport is affecting the, uh, you know, uh, current pandemic uh, type of stuff, right? But for drug I, testing I, I, trials, I, types of animal that has done it. Like for yeah, so one, one in animal modeling is gonna be very important too. Um, actually, funny enough, uh, one of the journals we're working with, one of the direct questions they gave us was, um, can animals be carriers of COVID-19, like your household pet? Yeah. Um, and they, can they be reservoirs for the virus? Um, so, you know, you'd be, you'd be surprised of, of what actually there is. I think, I think the, the biggest goal is, you know, you don't want to just, or, you know, overall goal is to be a value add. So it's about targeting the questions that the medical and scientific community actually are asking and want answers to and providing it in a format that, is actually relevant. You know, most of the medical and scientific community aren't going to be coming on to Kaggle, on to Corona Y, on, on to these side places exactly. to get their medical knowledge. I mean, it, it just, it, you know, you want to take it to where they are. So it's for providing the tools, creating them, getting it into a format that they can use so they see the value add of, okay, here's new questions that we want answered. We know that the AIs are already set up and equipped for this, even if it's, okay, hey, we'll do one meta-analysis now and literature review and, you know, the AI is going to be keeping track of this and come six from, months from now, we can see, okay, do we need to publish a new one? Are there enough studies out? You know, has the trend for this specific uh, research question changed? Um, and I think that's where, you know, the real value of this is going to come from. And, and that's kind of the direction we have been taking the project, you know, kind of directly you know, working with editors of and leaders of these institutes of, hey, give us what your high priority questions are because we know the questions people think are important versus the ones that the people on the ground actually want answered. 
Yeah, I, I fully agree. And, you know, we've started this kind of spreadsheet to combine different thoughts on types of um, articles and actual like topics discussed because, you know, like topics are, are like antiviral agent or like immunology and things like that. And those are completely different ontologies than the types of uh, actual articles. And here, this is just a, a, a draft to showcase that the model system and study type are going to be very specific to like clinical trial types of papers, but definitely won't apply for like news articles or you know, the summaries of, of meetings or conferences. Yeah. So, and, and I, I don't know if, you know, this is a direction you guys necessarily want to take. Uh, what I have started suggesting to some of the other major groups that have been reaching out to us, I'm like, you know, pick a, pick a, pick a table or a set of tables um, or research questions and say, hey, those are the ones we want to target and create the AIs and, you know, almost roll back the clock on the, on the data set. You know, you can say, okay, I'm going to only give AI access to the first three and a half months of the data set um, and then see if it can fill in that, that, that last portion. And, and one of the, the reasons, you know, um, Anthony and, and, and Paul have uh, structured the challenge the way they have is so we can literally give a numerical score of, you know, your AI is 75% accurate in pulling the, yep. yeah, yeah, you're 75% accurate in pulling the right papers, but your ability to parse out the information needed is, is terrible, which, okay, great. We, now that we know that, we can have our curators work on that section and improvements can be made there. Or, hey, you're not pulling the right articles, but your algorithm is great for you know, pulling this specific um, product. Let's try to combine it with uh, a, a different one that's running. Um, so yeah. we're, we're creating very tangible benchmarks now um, of tables that have been you know, peer reviewed, um, so to say. So you know, there's, there's an exact goal in mind of what needs to be done. It's, it's not kind of all of these different projects. Flowing not open-ended problem. And yeah, Kaggle it's, it's is very central. Yeah, and Kaggle is best positioned to have challenges that have benchmarks. And I've actually won one of the Kaggle challenges last year that was open-ended. And it was tough because it, it wasn't clear what to, to actually provide as a result, but it all comes down to, you know, narrowing the scope and actually formalizing the, the benchmark uh, even if the problem is open-ended. So yeah. Mid, mid, yeah. mid next week, we'll, we'll, we'll have exact, you know, I'll we'll have the terribles narrowed down to specific settings. Um, it'll be, Hey, here are your exact benchmarks you need to be hitting um, to amazing. be considered a, a perfect algorithm or, you know, as close to perfect yeah. as we're going to be getting. And, and that's going to really help formalize <laughs> our process moving forward because once, you know, we're not going to wait till the end of, you know, submission to start incorporating the algorithms. Once you have an algorithm that's working, we'd love to, you know, get it into play and st have the curators start using it to make their life easier because every single day that goes on, the number of papers increases and that manual lift is getting harder and harder and harder to do. And we're fortunate to, enough to have, you know, tons of medical and scientific volunteers who are, who are helping with this, but there is a tipping point there when it just turns into too much for people to manually go through. So the sooner we can get some of these AIs for tables up and running, um, I think the better. And I think that's where Corona Y is, is going to be great to leverage because you guys have so many talented people that are in this like exact domain who can kind of challenge these questions and, you know, pick up tables like, hey, I'm super interested in your anesthesia tables that are going to be coming up. Those are the ones I want to make something for. Yeah. And I think the, the one team, because we have multiple teams working on different things, and there is a risk factors team, there is the vaccines and therapeutics team, there is geo team, and there is a transmission and incubation team. And I actually believe the one that ha will have the most impact will be the vaccines and therapeutics because uh, of how far along they, they got into the process. So yeah, let's, let's see how it goes. I'm definitely excited and it seems like the perfect structure for us to collaborate on in terms of you guys are well positioned to create that benchmark and we are best positioned to actually uh, create a model that makes sense or at least like you know has more utility than whatever uh, Kaggle submissions that exist right now. Yeah and, and one, one thing is, is that's a little difficult is not all of our questions are going to fall into those four major categories so those categories were based on the original questions that came out of the White House OSTP. Yep. Um, you know, a lot of those questions are out of date or irrelevant now. Mm -hmm. um, you know, I'll go ahead and say, you know, some of those risk factors, I, it, it, it's a pointless table, you know, it's not in 
in depth or parsed out enough, you know, is diabetes a risk factor? I mean, who cares? You yeah, know, you, yeah, you have diabetes a as a giant thing. You know, there's type one diabetes, type two diabetes. Um, then even within those, you're going to want to parse them out by, you know, those on specific medications, long, BMIs, A1Cs. Yeah, there's loads of variations. With you know, yeah. we, 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 we ran it by, you know, the clinicians who are actual experts in this and they're like, it's, it's, it's too broad. So I think a lot of the questions that are being tackled right now are not value add. I don't know where to put all the questions that we're getting specifically, you know, from institutes and editors and, you know, some of our experts in the field who, you know, they're like, hey, we're going to get together with, you know, four or five other people in our subspecialty and try to come up with five focused research questions that we think this would be perfect for. Um, a lot of those, you know, especially if they're subspecialty <coughs> specific, won't fall into one of those categories. Yeah, and we're fully on, on point with that. We also discovered that naturally once we started onboarding MDs into our process and they told us that, hey, you know, smoking is, is kind of like useless as a factor for me as a, a physician. But if you could explore the heart uh, risk disease factors, that will be beneficial to my direction of research. And that's why the risk factors we actually positioned, you know, to uh, have a case study just on that based on the request from multiple physicians. So I'm fully on, on point with, with your direction of the fact that um, the, the, Kaggle, the original Kaggle questions were a good structure to bring us all together. But right now it's really up to you know, people with their own direction of research uh, positioning those questions for us yeah. to answer. Even, even heart disease, you know, if, you, if you talk to actual cardiologists or those that are editors of you know, um, ATVB, you know, that's a specific specific atherosclerosis journal, um, circulation research, like any, any of these very specific journals, they'll say your, your topic's too broad. I think yeah. that was a problem in the beginning. It's, you need really very focused research questions, especially as the literature expands so rapidly. Otherwise, your tables are going to get too long and realistically become pointless. It's, you might as well just do a normal search again. Um, and being able to cohesively see <coughs> an answer requires a very, very specific research question. And that's what my focus has been this week is, you know, going back to people, hey, your question is great, make it more specific. You know, I want to be able to answer a very specific question with the table. It's, and every time you use overarching, you know, diseases, you're never going to get a good, good answer. The design thinking principle of uh, the paradox of specificity, you build very, very specific processes to solve very specific. And once yeah. you've learned how to solve them very specific solutions, you learn how to then ex expand on that yeah. concept into other solutions yep. or can you go, can, can this solution also now be turned into solutions for this, 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 and then the yep. more specific ones we can build and then we can iterate from the versions of these differences and then work out what makes them all similar and then build a system that almost becomes that on its own. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. I think you hit the nail on the head. All right, so I, I want to take some time to actually try to get uh, more feedback from you in terms of the, the user experience here. And essentially, we fixed the columns, as you mentioned, but I also wanted to understand how you, like, if there are low-hanging fruits that we can quickly fix in terms oh, of... Can you, can you hit the... Can you go as if you're going to risk factors? Um, top left, if you hit the three lines in a row. Um, yep. Go to interactive tables. I love this format. Nice. I think this is a great format. I mean, granted, you know, it's, it's for risk factors, but I, I think, you know, even like, you know, sample size is kind of giving you within there uh, a visual of what the sample size looks like. Um, the URL has been con condensed and e easily, you know, um, ex expandable. It's, it's um, you can sort. I, 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 I personally kind of love this design. Um, so when okay. I, was, I was clicking through it, um, and I, you know, I, I think it, it, you might be able to use this for other tables as well. Perfect. I know it's only for risk factors, but I, I think you know, tables like this could look great otherwise. Perfect. And the reason why you you like it is probably because it's you know condensed, right? And you can see all of the stuff uh, in in one place. But also you see some of the like um, you know highly visual things. At, at the same time, right? I'm, I'm trying yeah, to understand you, you, why. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So like you don't realistically need sample twice, um, but you know, you have sample, but also within it, 
you're seeing kind of graphically, okay, I can just take a quick look and see which ones have the most without looking at each number, you know, okay. that, that's something that's so simple, but right here, I, I saw that and I was like, wow, that's actually really helpful. You know, that's, that's, a, that's, a, that's a nice, you know, use of conditional formatting. Um, just a visual cue that works very quickly and makes it efficient to pick it up. Yeah, um, and that, that was something just so small and simple that I was like, wow, nice, yeah, I, I like that. Um, I think, you know, you know like, like you were saying earlier, being able to kind of sort by, by column within different parameters by date. Um, you know, if you have, you buy a journal, so you can throw all the preprint stuff at the bottom if you're like, hey, I only want to see things that have been peer reviewed and published. Um, I think it'll be very interesting to see as time goes on, which papers make it through and which ones drop out in the peer review process. I think in the beginning, it's very important, you know, to get the two patients in the middle of Kansas as an N of two who, you know, had coronavirus and X symptoms. But, you know, once you kind of have a high enough N number, that study of two isn't as valuable anymore as, as, as some of the others. Yeah, and, and when, you've, sure. when you've got nothing, something's better than that. But when you've got right. something useful, it, it, yeah, nothing, exactly. a very small amounts, not very useful anymore. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. And from your perspective as a scientist and researcher and a doctor, um, how much uh, additional value is there to the metadata that is not necessarily the stuff that you know literature review does in terms of extracting stuff, but like things like where the this research paper comes from? Uh, what what's the geography country of the actual clinical trial and some additional metadata so I think your 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 question depends on who what hat you're wearing so you know if I'm, I'm wearing the hat of a, a, a clinician um, for example you know you probably aren't as concerned with all of the nuances of what's controlled for what's not controlled for um, if you're wearing the hat of kind of a researcher um, that's doing a meta-analysis, you know, you really you want to know every control if you yeah, can. Yeah, you're, yeah. You're, you're, you're getting into the nitty gritty. I mean, one, one major, major value of this tool, and we've already seen it in play and these tables especially, is when you need to put together your answer. You know, you, you asked a question, you know, what is, um, you know, how is the hypercoagulability state of, of COVID-19, like which patients are at highest risk for that? You ask the question, now you have the table, Give an answer, you know, and are, you know, that's where you bring in an expert and you're like, hey, take a look at this table. Um, normally they would have to do their own review, like go through all the papers, read them, um, figure out what the sample size was, what type of study it was. You know, it takes two to three days to kind of do that and then write up your opinion. And for one of our questions, you know, we had our expert opinion, uh, our expert go through and he was able to knock it out in less than a day. He was like, wow, this saves me so much time. Like I was ready to put in two, three days for this. And you kind yeah, of already my, um, had everything in oh, one yeah. place. It's exactly what my, my girlfriend's doing a literature review and um, she's a psychologist. She's doing a literature review on neuropsychology of memory or something at the moment. And she's, yeah, they've been going through this for weeks and weeks and weeks. And I've told them, I said, like, yeah. we are literally building a tool that it's not right now, but in the future will hopefully make that easier. So we go, I, I, was, I told Arthur, things. I was like, this is going to change how people do um, literature reviews and meta analysis in the future. This, this will literally change how science is done. Um, and, you know, we have some groups who professionally do this and who are volunteering with us and they're like, you know, we see this changing our field and, you know, we, we just want to learn. Like, we'll volunteer our efforts, our people, our time, but we see the value in this and we, we want to learn. And I think a lot of the journals we're working with also see the value. It's, I think it unfortunately took a pandemic for um, the whole, you know, tech community to come together with the medical yeah. community. Fine, fine, you know, yeah. you know a, a lot said, of the I've developers we talked to... I thought it was crazy. They were like, I can't believe you guys do this by yourself. It took a, it took a panic to get the smart people to, to smart people who were interested in a thousand things to go, you know what, we should probably concentrate on one thing for right now. We'll deal with the, yeah. the secondary things later because we need to get through this first. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but it's like you were saying, you know, it's, 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 uh, it's the one where like we spend all this time doing something in the tech industry is like, why? That's so easily automatable. And yep. now they're coming in and being like, oh, wow, those are so many man hours we are now going to save in the future. Yeah. Okay. So to rephrase your answer to, to my question about the uh, additional metadata, it's highly personalized to the, the individual that is looking at this uh, data, right? Yeah. It, it okay. depends on who you're presenting to. Are you presenting to lay public, um, you know, researchers, clinicians in the field? 
um, heads of institutes who are trying to put guidelines so, together. I mean, each so one's looking at it differently. So in that sense, could we have um, on the way in almost like a who pick you your are. profile? Pick your profile. This is what what's your what's your angle for this? Are you just you know? And then exactly, you could literally go. I'm a research expert, or I'm an epidemiologist, or I'm a. But, doctor, but they, they wouldn't be official. coming here, right? So no, they, well, the, the principle, if we could work out a way of making a, almost like personas and then different versions of the system to help the personas. Yeah, just filtering the data based on the intent. And it, in itself, it's actually a machine learning problem that can be supervised problem. And we can basically crowdsource uh the the inputs for this but i i won't uh, talk too much about this yeah. and, and and also and also for that you know kind of the medical co and scientific community already has kind of a format for that you know there's specific journals that you go to when you want a sp uh, strictly clinical answer there's other journals you go to that let you know you, specialize in method papers versus let uh, me ask you is it possible oh, is it true that if i go to a specific journal that focuses on like clinical trials on like viral agent stuff that the tables will look very similar for all the papers in there i uh, so every journal has guidelines they have style guidelines but they won't necessarily say you have to have these columns in this order like it might every journal has different style guidelines some might say hey you have to have the date on the far left and you have to be 12. No, no, I, I don't mean the order i mean the actual values content yeah. Um, no, it, it's not clinicaltrials.gov, you know, things like the databases like that, you know, we have one person who works for a farm, farm, big pharma company, and that's his only job that's is to make that. tables for like that for, for clinicaltrials.gov. And that's a very, very structured, everybody has to put the following data points in for your study. Um, and they all have to be in the same exact format for research studies. That is not the case. What I'm trying to figure out, like, what is the natural entity and natural process that converges, you know, abundance of information to some unified format, if there is such process? Reviewed, unified. Reviews by uh, major journals. Every, every major journal does, a, does reviews in their, their topic that's done by kind of your top in, top in the field, and they kind of synthesize everything. And, mm. you know, if you're an immunologist, you kind of, We'll read the Nature Immunology Review and you'll, you'll see what okay. that says. And that's kind of your overall benchmark of where the field is moving for a specific direction okay. or for, for a specific topic. <clears throat> that's, that's helpful. All right. Well, to me, it oh, makes sense. So in some ways, if we could, if we could then work on uh, the, them, them sort of curator ones, let's call them the curator research group. If we could work out all them highlight re, re curator groups, and then go, okay, they're modeling off this. If we can then pull the information from the, the disparate piles and then turn them to look like at least something like that. I mean, that's, that's kind of what familiar. we're doing. That, not, be, not to directly, but yeah, that's familiar. what we're doing. Yeah. That'd, be, that'd be basically using them as the design and layout model principle. Yep. Yeah. And taking all the disparate stuff from everywhere else and go, you need to look more like this so we can synthesize it together. Right. Yeah. Good. Perfect. All right, so I'm good uh, with understanding that. The last question that I have for this call is actually understanding the, um, the intent and the ideal process for the actual curation and annotation. So I'll, I'll share my screen back. And I want you to imagine that you actually need to change something in here and just tell me how, how that would happen, ideally. Ideally or right now? Ideally. Um, ideally, you can get um, the site to look like this for the curator. They can double click into whatever section, like, you know, they accidentally put 257 instead of 572. They can double click that, change the value, done. Okay, and that would have to be approved by the, the community in some form? Um, no, I think you, you, can, you can have all those pending and they, they have, you know, final approval somewhere. You know, right now we have a whole error handling team whose sole job it is they're at, they're oh, at a okay. so have to go through. A human uh, layer of, you know, responsible people that approve the change. Mm -hmm. So kind of like Wikipedia 
in a way, right? Yeah, yeah. You 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 make your change, but you know, there's there's kind of a final overview process of them kind of just going through and hitting yes, 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 and most of them are probably going to be yeses. Perfect. Um, okay, now I have the mental construct of how it should be done because before. But, and then the, the the second question was kind of just based on what you just said is how do you add in new rows? I I would love it if you know you could just copy and paste what you already had in Excel and and throw it in there but you know in the future as we move more toward can you give me an example on here um yeah so let's say you know this goes up to 421 let's say a study gets published in 422 how does my curator come in and add that study oh just adding new paper to this question right okay uh but or if there's a, a study in the middle like you know three another one that was on march 26 do they you know treat it like excel and hit add add row and yeah, then yeah, yeah. plug it in so uh, that's, that's what I mean. It's just an interface for them to add stuff or get rid of things. But the other thing that I, I want to decouple the fact that, um, you know, adding new um, uh, papers, because that, that's super easy. The harder problem that I heard from you mentioning this uh, interaction is actually extending the list of um, columns. So let's say, you know, there is a strong uh, need for some other column. Can you give me an example? any lab value you yeah know, like lab blood value count. here Hi. red blood cell count so you as a researcher you would want to add this column and fill it in right yes our goal is to avoid that our goal is you know yeah of, of, to, to try to keep them keep them the same but you know for some questions you will need you know you know within this field everyone uses this as the gold standard lab value to determine which way the patient's going to go on something okay yeah uh perfect and i totally understand the the end goal but we may probably need the step in between uh to reach uh that you know grand vision of... yeah and can you go can you reshare your screen and kind of go to um uh the non-risk factors the normal tables um and maybe just kind of click on a, a couple of them uh maybe a different one i'm trying to find one where it's like uh because there's a bunch of information all in one it just completely compresses and it makes the column super long uh, but maybe that issue has already been fixed i i fixed it uh early oh today. oh okay yeah never mind then that 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 issue that issue's been fixed i know because some of some of some of the studies you know the explanation is very very long-winded and yeah, that's just you, the you need to have a wrap yeah, that's just the nature of uh, that specific question, that there's no numerical value you can pull out. It, it, it's more yeah. of a excerpt. Okay. Cool. Well, yeah, no, that, you, you, already, you already took care of it. Never mind. <laughs> <laughs> no problem. Yeah, as you can see, we can do stuff very quickly. We just need to sync uh, better because we come from different backgrounds. And, you know, it's, it's usually a matter of finding that common speech to yeah. understand each other. All right, so I feel I have everything that we need to, to make progress on this frontier. And I'll, I'll probably wait for, for you to present some form of this standardization. I'm also planning to have a call with the same group of Rockefeller researchers this weekend to show them the progress and further you know, do the um, kind of extraction of their needs in terms of virologists and uh, other researchers. And yeah, I'll, I'll send you the video of, of that conversation. Unless you, you want to join that call. Uh, send me an invite and if I can make it, I'll definitely try All to right. jump on. Um, I, so I, so I'm just, just to clarify, next step is, you know, you're going to be waiting on um, that Monday, Tuesday deadline of getting tables um, ideally as uniform as possible. Um, I, I keep a lookout for that, uh, the challenge that they put up um because anthony and paul are going to really try to narrow that down to make it as specific as possible yeah and you know if, if people on your team um want to sign up for tables you know specific tables of hey here's the one i'm going to be tackling and you know we can set them up directly with the curators and the clinicians that are working on that set so they can kind of have a little bit of back and forth of oh hey your algorithm's pulling x papers yeah, dialogue helps. because of this yeah. yeah that i think really got us to where we are now is our our curators working directly with designers hey um i just realized you know it's the the algorithm thinking xyz for this reason and if you just change a small little part yeah. it fixes it. 
I mean, oh. I had I had the same thing because I've done some of the curation for the annotations on, on for VT ones, and I was do going through some of the research, and I've done it for risk factors as well. And I was going through, and I was like, I, I got to a point where I was just like, this is talking about this is talking about this thing, this is talking about that thing, that's talking, yeah. this is talking about side effects, this is talking about. I was like, I was just starting to do that automatically, and I was like, this is something you need to be able to work out how to get from it. And then we're already at that point now. That was like three weeks ago. <laughs> yeah, I mean, yeah, it's, it's only been it's only been really three weeks that our 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 team came on and and put this through. My my goal is kind of within the next three to four weeks have most of the process. Kind of down and you know the medical and scientific community realize the vision and the benefits of this and for them to start embracing and using it um you know actively yeah so and then, for, and then i want to do some actual user research with them if I can. yeah they exactly then I'll, then I'll use it for my own work <laughs> yeah uh, that's the best I'll way to, to do it yeah and um the so the thing that you mentioned about focusing on one specific type of papers I would love to do that, but I see uh, some uh, groundwork that we need to accomplish to actually do that in the right way. And it's actually uh, creating a machine learning algorithm to automatically classify uh, papers into the types. And we already have a team that is led by Christine, actually. Um, Christine Chan, that uh, I think is in your Slack channel too. Mm -hmm. And that's her proposal document that she created and basically, she's uh, she's leading that was Imran and Kriti, I think. Not sure if those guys are in your Slack, but that's essentially what we want to you know crack in the next couple of days to at least have some baseline. Cool. I can I can also pair her with a a couple of researchers. Um, it's not all of them are in the Slack, and the Slack is mainly the curators. But we have a lot of people who have kind of been more. They wait till it gets to the website, and then they you know use the form to provide feedback of. Hey, here's where your mistakes are because they're the experts in that. Maybe I can pair her up with one or What's two the, experts. Uh, and you mentioned an important thing that we stumbled upon, you know, at the very beginning of Slack community is the fact that, you know, MDs that are 60 years old are not really using Slack. And what worked for you in terms of collaboration with them? What was the best way? Uh, we, we, we all do conference calls. Okay, we so we, we all love to we, yeah we love to see each other's faces and kind of go through it. One of them literally got on a whiteboard behind him once and and just sketched some stuff out for us. So he's like, okay, if I have a patient who has this versus this, and I took right. it down this route, so I want to see this column for this because this is what narrows it down. And I'm like, yeah, that works. Yeah, could you help us organize one of these calls early next week? Um, yeah, whenever it works for you to get. A group of people to help us with this uh, classification of types of papers. Yeah, um, I'll I'll reach out to two or three of them um, to kind of you know they <coughs> one of them literally specializes in creating like you know studies and designs. He does it for a major drug nice. company. Um, All right, you know. that sounds like a great plan. Yeah, let's let we can we can let me just look at my calendar real fast. Either Tuesday or Wednesday, we can we can probably do some sort of call with them. Um, yeah, well, I'll I'll reach out to them. I'll, I'll coordinate with Christine. But yeah, I think you know perfect. they can get involved and say, hey, here's here's this algorithm, and I'd love for it to kind of be uh, put up so that the community kind of can go back and forth and see its mm -hmm. utility. Because if it works really well, um, I I don't think we should be reinventing the wheel. All the other you know, people who are working on algorithms to fill in lines. Yeah. Like that's one column that just got, you know, put put a put a check on. Exactly. Because we, we really are in a time crunch. I think, you know, the number of papers is is rapidly expanding, doubling every two weeks. Um if we kind of don't get on top of it now, um we're gonna I, be behind the flood. <laughs> yeah, it's it's just not gonna end up being realistic anymore just to even validate or go through and, and error check and because there yeah. are gonna be dumb things that we've already seen algorithms pick up you know our a previous study used 80 patients ours used half of that but they, i picked up that it was 80 patients you know yeah um for seasonality weather versus weather you know whether or not versus the weather outside because yeah. it's reality. it's hard it's it's a very hard problem and there is no like even if you use bird and other complex word embeddings it's impossible to catch all of these things English language is not known for being efficient. <laughs> and, and, and don't forget, these, a lot of these articles are pre-print, which means they haven't gone through peer review. So they are very, very rough in, 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 yeah. in what they are, many of them. 
Yeah. So that, that makes it a little more challenging if, uh, compared to if we were only using peer reviewed studies. Yeah. All right, man. Well, this is exciting. I'm super happy that we managed to figure out how to work together and I, I can definitely see us creating something useful. Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm excited. Yeah, feel free to shoot me a message. Tyler, you too. I don't know if you're in our Slack group yet, but uh, feel free to join. Which in. Slack, which I'll, Slack is it? I don't, I'll I'll add I don't think I have it linked up. Yeah, I created Perfect. a shared channel. All right, cool. Um, sure, drop me in. There's too many channels. I, I'm, I'm in like 50. I don't need more. I don't go looking for more now. <laughs> that, that, that's fair. Yeah. Well, well, one, one of them, if you if you want to, you know, just learn more more about kind of the medical side, a lot of the students have, will go back and forth and kind of kind of kind of give some general overviews of how medicine is run. Um, so they, they they've been learning a lot about tech, and I think the tech community has been learning yeah. a lot about the research and medical field, which has been really nice. Yeah organic cohesion you know yeah we just got force them all in the same place and then yep. let yeah. it happen magical things happen exactly. all right man. hey man well i'm yeah i'm really glad we were, we were able to link up because i think i think together we can really push this forward quickly um and I, I don't know what the rest of the missions of corona y are but you know hopefully eventually we can we can get together and figure out you know how i might be able to help steer some of those or yeah, there is so much stuff. As I told, as I've shown you that diagram, it's it's already quite complex and it's growing, and we're just trying to limit the scope because things only should grow see, and grow. You should see V just VT alone's plan has got like eight dimensions in it already. It's just like, all right, guys, you keep keep going on that. I'm just, I'm not even sure what you're gonna do with it all, but great, keep working. <laughs> yeah, perfect. All right, well, all right. Um, we'll touch base, I guess. Early next week. Yep, sounds good. I'll follow up. Yep. Bye, guys. All right. Thanks, man.